Hello and welcome to our last episode of chapter 1 and our first episode of chapter 2. In the original Hebrew, this narrative sort of was blended together. However, whenever um, the church sort of made an attempt to categorize the Old Testament into um, more look upable, we could say, chapters and verses, they put a chapter break here. So we are looking at verse 1, chapter 1, verse 31, and chapter 2, verses 1 two, and three. So let's dive in on the conclusion of the first of several creation accounts in the Bible. So God saw, again, we know this, and I'm just sort of going to cruise through this and let you pick out things that the authors want us to notice. God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Not just good, very good. Miod Tov. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their hosts. And we can think about, you know, so God has successfully separated and um, subdued the wildness of pre-creation by having the land and the skies, right? We didn't have those, those... Those weren't super clearly defined before, and now they are. And they all have hosts. The wasteland is full of life. By the seventh day, seven, very important number. It's a holy number because of this verse. By the seventh day, God had completed his work, his work, which he had made, is the original. So he made work for him to work and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day. And in, uh, in practicality, he also blesses the number seven because it's often used throughout the rest of the Bible in a special way. And he sanctified it or made it holy because in it, in that day, he rested from all his work which God had created and made, or you could even say created to make. So let's dig into this. We know seen, right? And now we get sort of a crescendo of this theme. God is seen from God's perspective. And this is sort of a symbol I like to use for God. God is looking at creation and he sees it and it's not just good. It is very, very good. So we get a crescendo to that theme of seeing things that are good from God's perspective. I wonder who will see things next and what they will see as good and what they will see as bad. Thus the skies and the land were completed in all their hosts. And remember, the hosts include the stars, the um, animals, you know, so like goats and sheep and cows, etc., creepy crawlies, fishes, and of course, humans. By the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had made. He rested. So now God rests in contentment at the fulfillment of creation. He's going to now sit back and enjoy creation a little bit and look at it and just be in it and resting has a connotation not just of taking a nap but actually of dwelling right i rest and i dwell in a place after a long trip god is dwelling in all of creation and enjoying it then god blessed and that idea of blessing um you know we have so many different ways to use the word bless in our culture today like you sneeze and someone says bless you, right? And in the Hebrew, it's a little bit more of a unlocking of potential. God has unlocked the potential of the seventh day and blessed it. And what does that mean? He's made it holy. He sanctified it. So sanctify means to make holy and holy means to be separated from or distinct or special, you could even say. And so God has made the day, the seventh day, holy. 
He's finished the work. He's resting from his own work. And later on, this will continue in the theme of the Sabbath, where God commands Israel to rest and to stop what they're doing on the seventh day. And we can remember that Jesus was raised from the dead on the eighth day, on Sunday, because he rested in the tomb on Saturday or the Sabbath day. And he is raised from the dead to begin the work of a new creation and to enter into a new life with him. And that is the end of Genesis chapter 1 and the beginning of Genesis chapter 2 with us trying to read the Bible the way that it wants to be read.